Welcome to the Recover You podcast with Kyleen and Patrick Terhune. It's here that we talk about sex addiction, betrayal trauma, mental, emotional, and physical health, faith, and anything and everything needed to recover you to your most authentic self that God created you to be. Welcome everyone to another episode of Recover You. Hi, Hello. Patrick. Hello, Kyleen. Today we're talking about creating healthy habits in recovery. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. And good topic. Yeah, and uh, I'm terrible at creating habits, and you're really excellent at them. So I'm going to defer to you probably for most of this conversation. I think you're going to be the uh, the star. <laughs> star of the show. <laughs> star huh? of the show today. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, but a couple things I want to talk about before we jump into that, and that is that we had just an amazing comment from somebody today about the podcast. So I was just really um, thrilled when she told me that she has been listening to our podcast from day one of Discovery, and that because of that, she and her husband both have a support team, and they both have groups, and they're working towards a full therapeutic disclosure because she found me on TikTok. And they started listening to this podcast and she and I, she and I got a chance to uh, connect today. And so that was just really cool. And she was really thankful for the podcast. And so we just want to pause and say how thankful we are for each of you and hearing stories like that really just makes the whole process worth it. Everything that we do behind the scenes, everything that we talk about on the podcast, and it just means a lot to us to hear those stories. So thank you for being here. And it means a lot that we can impact even one person. And we know that we have one person because she told us so today. So yeah, that's awesome. yeah, that's right. I, I know um, when I got ready to lead groups and when we've done this podcast and go public and all of these things that are hard, these are hard things. Um, these podcasts are really hard to record, just really hard. Sitting here with me. Really hard. Talking to me. Oh, really hard. No, but, um, you know, I, I know that was always my singular thought was like, if, if it would just help one person, if mm-hmm. I would just get one person in the group. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the, the reality is, is that it has been more than one person mm-hmm. and they, you know, but what's it called? The butterfly effect. Is that right? The ripple effect. Ripple effect. Yeah. But there's a, there's a butterfly thing too. I know what you're talking about, yeah. now, but it's so the like, same idea. So like, you know, you, you help some people get into health and then they support other people. And, it, and it's a real, much like we were supported too. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a really, it is certainly yeah, we didn't start it. We came in. Yeah. Right. It's, it, yeah. it's certainly beaten my expectations of mm-hmm. how influential this would be. Yeah. 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 I'd say to some extent we had a vision, but this is just like the way things have unfolded. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is really cool. Right. Uh, to that extent, if you are someone that listens to the podcast and finds value, it would really mean a lot if you take just a moment to leave a review. It's not just to help us feel good about the content we put out (laughs) and know that we're helping you, uh, but it really actually does help other people find the podcast. So if it, if you were somebody that found the podcast and, um, is, is finding value in it, Leaving a review can kind of participate in that ripple effect and help other people find it that may find value in it as well. Uh, another easy thing to do would be to take a screenshot of what you're listening to and post it on social media and uh, or share it with a friend. You know, if you hear of somebody that's struggling and you can you can send them a text and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I love you. And I uh, wanted to share this particular episode or, mm-hmm. or the podcast in general. All of that is super, super helpful um, to continue spreading the message of recovery, which we fully wholeheartedly believe in. Absolutely. All right. So talking about the ripple effect. Yeah. Um I also wanted to mention a brand new thing that I am offering as a support tool and that is the Recover You community. I'm very excited about it. It's something that I've thought about for a while. It's something that has been in the works for a while and I set it up uh, I had a lot of ideas about what I wanted it to be. It's evolved even since then, and it will continue to evolve. But the idea is it is a private community off of Facebook for Betrayed Partners. This community is specifically for people who want encouragement, support, validation with a growth mindset. So the idea is that I am going to be going live with this group of, of women 
twice a month to do classes together. And those classes are going to be full of tools and resources and education to help you grow on your recovery journey and help take you to the next phase. So for example, the first class that I did this week was on the five stages of recovery. And so we spent some time talking about each phase, what that looks like, what you're going to experience in that phase, then what actions you might be taking in that phase to kind of move you through to the next phase, some questions to consider. And then at the end, we took a little bit of in integration time where I let everybody, after kind of absorbing all of that, think about what phase am I in? And I had some prompts there available for them to journal about you know, their next steps. What are the things that they can now take action on? So we want to help you uh, in a lot of different ways with, with, with information and education and tools and resources and encouragement and validation. And so this community is going to uh, provide a lot of different uh, areas of support. Next month, which is October, which is probably when this is actually airing, <laughs> uh, we are going to be focusing on emotions. So we're going to be doing things about identifying your emotions, supporting your body through emotions, navigating triggers, those sorts of things. And the classes themselves are going to be recorded and uh, kept in the in the resource library in the private group. So if you don't join, you know, day one, that's okay. You can always go back and watch the classes, but you'll get access to all the new classes, all of the old classes, and it's only $25 a month. So there's a community page. There is a faith-based page. There is a laughter page, and that's kind of there for hey, um, I don't want to think about betrayal today. I just want to see some silly memes. And so that's there too. So you have far side cartoons on there? Not yet. Not yet. Not right. yet. You'll nope. have to get on that. Yeah. And, and all of the women that are in this community are free to um, post and to share and to be a part of creating this experience for everyone else. So I want to create a really safe, a really fun, a really educational place for everyone so that it does feel like a safe space, like a place that you can go to get positive information on a journey that is so painful. So I'm really excited about that. I've created a coupon code for the podcast. So it's P-O-D V-I-P. So pod V-I-P. And that will give you your first month totally free. So if you're a little nervous about it, you're kind of like, I am interested in a support group, but I don't really know, or a support community. And I don't really know what that looks like. Pop in, see what it's like. You can always cancel your membership if it's not for you. Take a look at some of the classes, that sort of thing. But that uh, coupon code will give you one month free. And then it's $25 a month after that. And all those links will be in the show notes. So I would absolutely love to see you there. Yeah, I would say I would encourage all of you um, to go check it out. You know, she's the bomb diggity and she she really does. She really does a good job. She knows her stuff. And so, you know, she's not shooting from the hip or anything like that. She's really coming in with a lot of knowledge. So I really would encourage all of you to, to, to at least check it out. And I, I think it's a great resource for sure. Yeah, thank you. It's something else that even in the past 24 hours has kind of I've thought about adding is like, a specific page for each phase. So for example, if somebody is really in part of the growth and healing phases and they're not as much in the discovery and shock phases and they don't want to hear a lot of the stories of um, you know, new discoveries and things like that because they want to focus more on you know, building their relationship or, you know, whatever it, it, you think about different things and you focus on different things in different phases. Right. And so I'm thinking about also creating pages for each phase or grouping some phases together so that people can connect with each other there and can um, ask questions that are appropriate to that phase. And then if somebody does not want to see those questions, they just don't have to join that community. So it's really easy. Basically, you would like join which um, pages you want, and then that creates yeah. your timeline. And then if you don't want to see something, you don't join that page. And and so it's, it's really easy to use. Um, and what is also super cool is when we hit a certain point of growth, we have the opportunity to turn it into a full-blown app, which would be pretty cool, a full recovery app that you could have on your phone. So yeah. right now it's a web page, but eventually at yeah. some point it'll be an app. It'll be really cool. Dreaming. She's dreaming of the future. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just throwing out all these like awesome things to you guys here, but like the, the, all the women that are in there now are considered founding members. And I think I'm going to offer that title to everyone that 
like this first um, quarter Mm -hmm. that people join. So like through the end of 2023, you're going to be considered a founding member. And to me, what's special about that is that you guys are going to have the opportunity to help me create this and turn it into the most helpful resource for people. You're going to have a resource library that has lots of videos and tools, Mm -hmm. and that's going to be built out. And so your suggestions, your feedback, your participation, right? Posting and encouraging and loving on each other. That is what's going to make this so special. So yeah. That's my invitation to all of you. Check the link in the bio. Feel free to reach out to me on social media if you have any questions about it, but I would love to see you there. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. That was a little bit of a tangent. Uh, let's talk about habits. Okay. So habits are things that we all do. And I, if you notice, I'm not saying a good habit or a bad habit. Habits are, are something that that we all have. And when we move through life, those habits will sustain us in a level of... Um, uh, steady state, it may, those habits may drive us down or those habits may drive us up in improvement or, or, you know, whatever that, that, that may be. So, you know, it's important, especially when you get into a recovery type process to, uh, develop some healthy habits. So what we want to do is, or what I would like to do tonight is, is give a little bit of my perspective on habits. Um, I actually, you know, without, sounding too egotistical. I think I'm good at it. And I think I've used it. Oh, to... I'll, I'll tell everybody you're excellent at it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I don't have a Facebook group on habits. So just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's it's something that I excel at. And actually, I've been able to to use it to support my recovery. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is it, if you think about a habit, it didn't take us overnight to become a sex addict. It didn't take us overnight to become broken and then develop coping mechanisms that hurt yourself and other people. That's something that took time. And it took, you know, the, there are a, a there was a trajectory of bad habits that got into that, whether that was substance abuse along with it or whatever, you know, you didn't just show up there overnight. It doesn't happen. And and I and I think as you go through the healing journey and you think about how you got there, um, do you have a question? Mm-hmm, I'm raising. I'm okay, raising. Oh, hold on. <laughs> But you know, you you how you got there was through a long period of action reaction, which led to habits. And so, what you're trying to do is once you once you reach your own personal rock bottom, either through discovery or you've just had enough or legal consequences or whatever, you have a real choice now to start to develop some healthy habits. But to be honest, they're not going to show up right away. The the you know the the outcome is not going to show up. But that incremental change in your life, if taken in a positive direction, will help you. Go ahead, Kylie. I would like to answer your question. <laughs> I, have, I have some comments. Okay. Um, well, okay. So right when you were starting to say, talk about habits, just in general, how everybody has them. So we always think because we're, you know, we're intelligent beings on the earth, right? And we um, separate ourselves from animals and think we're so smart and all this kind of stuff, right? We always think that we're living in our consciousness. And about 95% of our life is actually lived out of our subconscious. And so, you know, if you think about it, you're breathing, you're not thinking about breathing, you know, your heart's beating, all this kind of stuff. You wiggle your fingers. It wasn't really like uh, too much of an effort, right? But then there's also, also all these other habits. Like you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. You get up in the morning, you get dressed. You have certain patterns. Make a you, cup of coffee. You make a cup of coffee, yep. right? Um, but once something becomes a habit, it essentially goes into your subconscious, which is why you can be driving and you know a pattern so well that you kind of dissociate the whole time you're driving but you're you're mm-hmm. uh, you're able to do it and to get to your destination and be safe and yeah in yeah. a safe way right. because that's we essentially live out of the subconscious and that's where all the habits are mm-hmm. and so i just kind of thought that was an interesting point to to make because we think okay well a lot, a lot of times we want to control things with logic mm-hmm. right with thinking right and right. often that's not going to work um, you know, and people try and fail and try and fail and try and fail to start new habits and things like that. And so mm-hmm. that's just something yeah. to be aware of there. And then the other thing that she said was um, with, you know, with, or, or I guess the question I would have is, would you say a lot of, when you were talking about the habits developing the addiction, I would imagine that a lot of them would be habits that have to do the coping mechanisms regarding isolation. Right. Because right. just when you think about the opposite of, addiction being community, then a lot of the habit patterns would be isolation, being alone, not being vulnerable, Mm -hmm. not having conversations about your feelings. Being away from people who can support you. 
Yeah. And so there's there's actually a thing in sexual addiction called the arousal template. And the arousal template is what happens is when people, um, as they start thinking about sex addiction, they will say, well, I'm just bad. I, I just act out. And but it's never really that simple. It's usually something that leads to it. So there might be a painful moment that's happening. It might be a fight with your wife. It might be that your your mother has developed cancer and you have never really learned a healthy way to kind of get that off your chest and it triggers your arousal template. And everybody has or, or everybody who is a who's gone through this um, is you know, has an arousal template. And actually during the Cocker series between episodes five and six, you actually go through and you chart out your arousal template. You think mm-hmm. about the last time you relapsed, what was going on in your life, what was the stressors that were going on, and it leads to a particular set of behaviors. Those are habits. Yeah, and so uh, Kylene has left me a, a pithy note, and uh, so the uh, the 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 no- the point we're is working really hard not to interrupt each other in these podcast episodes. So we're trying different ways to communicate <laughs> without talking on top of each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. So, but but actually, Ky- Kylene made a good point. the 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 fight doesn't cause the acting out. The fight triggers a emotional response inside of you and because of your unhealthy coping mechanisms you go to that so yeah so like just right. taking the responsibility off the wife when right, you made that right. comment yeah, yeah 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 the stressor um whatever that may be is something that that drives you there so like in my case my acting out pattern was the morning so that was a habit that was a, a, a definitive habit. So when I got went through discovery, I had to change those habits. I had to reshift those things. Now it didn't just mean that you know you don't lock me into a closet between the hours of five a.m. and eight a.m. You know there had to be some real growth there and some real real heart change. But but you know the habits are what got you there. You know you, you developed a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms, unhealthy habits. And it was really kind of a lack of awareness, right? One of the things they say is you don't really get better unless you become daily aware. So where are you? Are you upset? Are you frustrated? Are you mad? Are you, do you feel like you're not getting affirmation? These are all things that can lead you to a dark place. Doesn't mean you're going to be in a dark place, but they can lead you to a dark place. And so you have to be daily aware. So how do you become daily aware? That's a habit. So we talked a little bit more about the faster scale. The faster scale is a great tool that allows you to be daily aware. So you know where you're at. Yeah. I was just talking to a client actually about this idea that like, med- what is meditation? It is being aware in the moment. We Because we, we always want to think like, med- to be to be in a state of meditation, we have to have like, no thoughts or mm-hmm. whatever, right? Yeah. And I think I, I think I heard somewhere that's not that's not right because everybody has thoughts. You can't control your brain from not having thoughts. Mm-hmm. It's actually bringing your thoughts into your awareness. Mm-hmm. And so when you're talking about um, creating habits and everything, it's literally like ha- habits are habitual because they kind of drop into a state of like not being fully aware that you're doing them anymore, right. or you might have some awareness that you're doing them, but it's not like a complete conscious level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like what you're saying is almost like a meditative process. You're bringing your subconscious thoughts into your consciousness to become aware of them again, because Mm -hmm. then you can have full control over them. Right. Well, and, and, you know, there's so many applications for habits, you know, they work with quarterbacks on their footwork, right? And, you know, I think you, you actually said something you didn't realize about numbers and jerseys on sports. But everything, you know, an effective quarterback goes through and he learns his footwork and they drill it and they drill it and drill it. And the reason they drill it is when he's in the game and the ball gets snapped and he has to drop back and there's a, you know, 280 pound defensive end coming at him. If he's got good footwork, he's not even thinking about it's happening. Same thing used to happen when I was flying. We didn't wait till I was under night vision goggles with a sling load under in the clouds to practice an engine failure. We practiced an engine failure all the time. We did it in the simulator. We did it so much so that it was just second nature to us. So then when we were in the stressful situation, we could do it. So positive habits are going to get you, you know, there's a lot of applications for it throughout throughout, uh, life. One of the things that I do at in, in the organizations I run is I talk about incremental improvements. So, you know, here, here's a good example. If you want to 
um, produce at a particular rate and you're half of that rate now, you could say, hey, tomorrow I want to get 1% better or 2% better. And so if you do that every week, let's say every week you have a 1% improvement, you're going to get, I think, I think I read somewhere and I'm not sure I read this, that if you improve 1% each week during a year, you have a 30% improvement at the end of the year. Our, our math whizzes who are listening may, may, may question that. But the, like point the, the point being the, is you get there because you take incremental steps yeah. and cement those habits in and, and actually drive yourself towards something that, that, that you want to be. Do you remember the lesson when people were, were passing it around about the pennies investing? It's like you add a penny and it doubles every day, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and then that, that turns into like a million dollars in like, you know, 10 years or something yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think, I think when you, when, when you get into to creating positive habits, and I often think about this. So the positive habits that I created, and, and this is a little bit of a, of a difficult probably subject for, for you to hear because I had some of these before discovery, but they took on more meaning afterwards. So the, the habits that I created post discovery were wake up, roll over, tell you I'm awake, <laughs> right? And that's something we did for over a year. Right. Almost two years. years. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I went to work out after that, I would come up and tell you I'm done working out. Everything's okay. That was just a habit I was doing. And then I would journal. And usually within that, I go get a cup of coffee and then I would sit and I would go through my faster scale. I would benchmark where I am for the last 24 hours. I would um, I would then do a sword drill, which is something that you do with a verse of scripture. It was kind of creating some awareness, had some thankfulness in there and, and things like that. Um, and uh, then I read some passages out of the Bible. So I actually started reading two chapters a day out of the Bible from front to front to back. And it took me however long that took me. Um, but those were positive habits. And if you think about it in the in the exploration journey of of trying to to recover from a sex addiction piece or whatever, those are real tangible steps that were moving me incrementally towards more awareness, which is where you want to be. It's not really about, it is about kicking the sex addiction, but it's really about gaining more awareness. And those particular steps help me. Now, beyond that, some other things that I do and that I continue to do is when I leave for work at the end, in the morning, I send you a Marco Polo video message, Mm -hmm. right? And I've been doing that for. Yeah. Well, I think that might have started um after re- after disclosure right? yeah 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 so yeah. for probably about two and a half years yeah two and a half years and i write you a note i have a little dry erase board and then i write notes on them and sometimes the notes are really deep and sometimes i have drawings and sometimes, sometimes they have art included <laughs> yeah and sometimes they're they're small but it's something that i do and i and i transport that habit with me on vacation mm-hmm. on business trips mm-hmm. when you're here when you're not here you get a picture of that dry erase board mm-hmm. and those are just habits that incrementally over time have restored connection. They have driven greater awareness in me and have supported my recovery. So they really have. And so those are re- re- really, really important. So if you think about a habit from a sense of, of even working out, you know, you, you, you don't get out of shape and overweight in a week, much like you're not going to get in shape and within an optimal weight in a week. And the re- way you get there is by being consistent and working through those habits. Well, you talk, we've talked about that about with addiction too, is the whole idea that, you know, three months of therapy or six months of being in a group does not completely resolve a 20 year addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. most of the time sex addiction starts in adolescence with early on exposure Exposure, right? and then, and wounds, and and then it develops, you know, Mm -hmm. over time and gets more and more consistent to the point where it is deeply subconscious and rooted and mixed up with all of these other woundings and all this kind of stuff. And so you know, we were always, we, you know, I was talking to someone today actually about, she was saying, you know, I, I almost feel like my husband is like overly confident and he's in month one. And I was like, oh, it's normal. He's yeah. just really excited that he has the tools. Yeah, he's, That's totally normal. Right. right. Overconfidence mm-hmm. is going to come later or could potentially come later when you go, okay, I'm six months in right. and I'm, I never want to relapse again. I'm so happy that I have these steps. I'm using them. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm going to stop going to therapy. Right. right. And so it's the same idea. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, in recovery, you develop the habits that no, there is there, it may change throughout recovery, but there is always something because ultimately the healing process, and this is for betrayal or addicted is that 
that if you want to call it meditation, it is that constant awareness, that consciousness of how am I feeling, what's going on in my life, and what do I need to take action on to improve it if it's not good. Correct. You know, one of the other aspects of of habit is you have to understand your your destination. Here's here's a good example. So if you say, I'm going to develop a journaling habit, and you don't really have a why behind it, then it's going to peter out. If you say, I want to be a human being that thinks deeply, that that acts with sexual integrity, and then you start to say, what are the things that actually contribute to that? What are the things that actually contribute to that? And so like, if I was to say to you, I want to be a person who, th- or I want you to be a person who thinks deeply and acts with sexual integrity, what are the things that go into that? That's a question for you. Oh, wait, you're saying like you want me to be a person of integrity? Yeah, well, just just kind of answer that question. If I was to say, if I was to say, if you were, if you were the person and you're saying- Are you I, saying I'm the addict? Yeah, yeah. What what would- <laughs> Wait, I need to know what role I'm playing here. <laughs> what are the, yeah, you're the addict. Okay. And, and, and I'm asking you, you know, what are the, what are the ways that a non-addict behaves? Well, you know, the immediate thing that might come to mind for some people is, you know, and we've talked about this in different ways, but not doing the behavior itself, not okay. acting out, right? Okay. So then how do you not do the behavior? What steps do you take to not do the behavior? Do you want the the the, the therapeutic answer? It doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, th- think of anything. Like and, the and, deep level well, what, answer? Yeah, what we're trying to do is we're trying to yeah. develop habits yeah. that support that. So, so Okay, so you don't want to do the behavior, then you have to understand the emotional connection to the, like what the behavior was providing for you. And right. so there's a process of understanding right. the emotion connected and what it was giving you. Right. Therapy groups, right? That's what that's doing. Therapy and groups kind of teaches you those. So things. then you're okay. So you're going backwards. You're right. going, don't do the behavior. Well, how do you not do the behavior? You have to understand what the behavior is giving you. Well, how do you understand what the behavior is giving you? You go to therapy. Right. You go to therapy and you develop a therapy habit. Right. And that's your therapy habit. And you work actually a good one because you're accountable to somebody Mm -hmm. and money is involved and it's on the calendar. That's right. That's right. And you're you're most likely to like, yeah, keep habits like that. Right. right? And, and group is the same. And you know, one of the things that there's a, there's another place that runs groups and they kind of wait for the, till they get men enough to run the groups. I, the way I run my groups is we go from episode one to 10 and then we go episode one to 10 and we go episode mm-hmm. one to 10 and unless people are sick or i'm out of town or whatever mm-hmm. it's what we do so we've created that habit people can come to rely on it. and as a matter of fact we had a guy show up the other night on monday night who had been away from the group for over a year he didn't have my phone number anymore mm-hmm. he just came to the church because hoping he was, you were there hoping the you time, were there and we were there mm-hmm. and so there's that's a really cool. yeah there's a habit forming thing that, that that that's a positive habit that he could rely on so so the same you know and you can draw it to anything if you want to be a a a neat person you don't go well i'm going to clean my bookshelf or i'm going to put my clothes away you say you start to take think deeper and I go i suddenly feel attacked about yes you should feel attacked we're sitting in my um, messy office that's right? okay no nobody can see it. <laughs> But you go, you go, what are the, what are the things that, that a neat person displays? Organize. Organize. Yeah. What, what is that? And you might say, okay, well, it's shelves that are organized. It's, um, clothes that are put away. So then what ha- habits do you need to develop to, to do that? So you got to think through it a little bit. You know, like once again, you go back to the story Reverse I told about engineer. Yeah. You, the, the, the story that I told about flying. How can I be the most effective pilot that always takes into account the safety of my passengers? Mm-hmm. What are the things I need to work on? And then you develop the practice habits to get there. So that you know that's what's really important. Yeah, I'm gonna put some sort of like practical ideas in here too. So you had kind of mentioned this earlier, you don't go from zero to a hundred. Mm-hmm. So when you reverse engineer this, the question you can ask then is what's the easiest and most doable thing that I can start to do that moves towards that goal. Right. 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 Um, and you also want to set it in a way where you can maybe reward yourself mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for accomplishing it, but also set the goal um, in a way that it, it it's so easy to accomplish that you're almost guaranteed to get that reward. Like at the end of the week, for yeah. example. Yeah. So like if you took exercise as an example and you you ultimately want to work out five days a week, let's say, mm-hmm. um, but you're not working out any, 
right now, then maybe you do something like my goal is to start this week with two. And if I, if I do it twice, then I'm going to reward myself at the end of the week with X, Y, Z, like yeah. a, a gift card, yeah. or something, right. like a, a spa treatment or something. Right. Um, and then, but the alternative would be like, it doesn't have to be that maybe it is like, okay, I will work out every day, but it's only gonna be five minutes. The only commitment that I'm going to give a hundred percent to is five minutes a day. And so if I say I'm going to walk five minutes a day, that counts. If I get turn on, you know, my at home workout video five minutes a day, and then maybe I want to do more, that's fine. But if I only do five minutes, that counts. Right. And then so you've set up the the bar to be one that you can hit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I also, you know, when you start to create habits, what happens is people will, they'll say, I want to read the Bible in you know, 60 days and they start on this journey of reading, you know, and it's possible, you know, you, you can do it, but they, but they Mm -hmm. burn out, Mm -hmm. they burn out. And so you got to find things that are going to build on themselves. So, you know, like you, you wouldn't go out and, and run a marathon in your first day running, you might run a half mile. And then over time, it's going to build into maybe your ability to run a marathon, maybe, maybe. But the whole point there is you have to incrementally move yourself into accomplishing a healthy habit. You really talk about journaling a lot and your journaling Mm -hmm. is pretty intense. You're going through the Conquer workbooks, you're doing exercises, you're Mm -hmm. journaling on your own in addition to that. So another another way to think about not going zero to 100 would be um, okay, if I'm going to commit to journaling and I've never done that before and it's a hard habit for me at the end of the day or the beginning of the day or whatever, maybe tie two things together. Cause we talked about, you know, the importance of, you know, identifying your emotions, right? At the end of every day, can you commit to have like a, a journal or a piece of paper by your bed or your phone or whatever it is mm-hmm. where you write one sentence and that's, that's right. how you're feeling today. Yeah. yeah. If you can commit to say, I'm, I felt sad today or I felt happy today, or today was a great day mm-hmm. that, you know, we might think, oh, that's kind of silly. But in reality, you're journaling at the end of the week, seven times more right. than you right. ever journaled before in your whole life. And there might that's be right. a day where you write that sentence and a whole page comes out yeah. because a lot came to mind and you started the process and you're like, well, then this happened today. And then this happened today. And then mm-hmm. you start processing and then something else comes to mind. And the next day you might be so tired that you go, I'm just really tired today. Yeah. And then the and day after okay. that, maybe yeah. you write something and then it opens up the floodgates and you write three pages that day, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what is the bite-sized piece that you feel like can actually help you? And then also within that, understanding different um, personality types and brain patterns to make things a little bit easier for you. So for example, I had a client that's like, hey, I struggle with dyslexia. I don't really like the journaling exercises and then we we were like, hey, can you can you like audio record on your phone and do it verbally for yourself mm-hmm. or something like that, right? Or if um, picking up a book and reading it, maybe you're a slow reader, but maybe you absorb really well with an audio book, right? Can, are there mm-hmm. tools and read like if you want to read the Bible in a year and you're a slow reader, or you it's hard for you to, to build that habit, but maybe you already have. This actually going into one of my other practical points, which is anchor it to a habit you already have. That's right. So yeah. like if you're if you want to read the Bible in a year. Um, but that seems hard to you, but you have a habit of listening to podcasts on your way to work. Can you listen to the uh, two chapters of the audio of Bible right. like on your way right. to work? Yeah. Like yeah. It, finding like what's a bite sized piece that starts you getting towards the goal, but then also you don't have to do it the exact same way that somebody else yeah. does it. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, as I've worked with, you know, men in groups, we have this thing called the commitment to change that you fill out each week. And it's basically like, Hey, what are the things I'm working on that, you know, this week that's, that's important. And you know, a lot of guys will come in and they may have a stumble or something like that. And they'll be like, well, I just need to get in the Bible more. And, and I always say, well, what chapter, what book, how long, what are you, you know, cause people think in this lack of specificity. And so that's where the habits will help you. It's like, well, can you read a chapter a day? No, that's too much. Can you read a verse a day? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, when? When are you going to do it? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know either. But when when exactly are, are you going to do that? You're talking yeah. almost about like making smart goals, like getting very specific. Yes, absolutely. Making sure it's measurable, yeah. making right. sure it's doable. And I think the measurable goes into... When it's a new habit, and I would say particularly, on, well, actually, I would say on both sides, betrayal because you're in such a uh, traumatic state. I think mm-hmm. rewarding positive habits during recovery can 
can be something positive to look forward to and kind of right. like, okay, you're, I'm going to go get my nails done if I accomplish this, or I'm going to do this, you know, time, time for myself, or I'm going to hang out with a friend or whatever that looks like. But also on the addiction side in recovery, you know, it can be a really beneficial thing to have this measurable habit that you then reward yeah. yourself in some way because you get a little dopamine from hit from that, but it's a you positive, really do. You but really it's a do. positive yeah. dopamine yeah. hit. And, and so you're starting to replace the unhealthy chemical yeah. um, patterns with healthy chemical patterns. Yeah. And there's two, there's two key points to this in, in the world of, you know, one is kind of not really related to sex addiction and the other one is. So the first one is if you know, you're going to journal in the morning, then make sure you're set up the night before. Because if you haven't gotten up in the morning and journaled before, you're going to get up in the morning, you're going to be tired. If you can't find your journal and you're looking for a pen, you're like, get all those things ready. Have them ready. Have the pen sitting on top of the journal um, in the place where you're going to sit and do it. If you don't do that, more than likely, you're not going to do it. Um, same thing with working out. Like if you're going to work out in the morning and you don't have your socks out of the drawer and you don't have your shoes standing by, there's going to be a million little obstacles that don't get you to that workout mm. room. So you got to have that stuff ready. The second thing is sometimes what happens is, is the betrayer will go, look at how good I'm doing. And you talk about rewards. I have now been in sobriety for 39 days and the spouse goes, I'm not going to reward you for doing the right thing. And you lose motivation. Your motivation needs to be intrinsic to your own identity, but don't forget to celebrate that. So if you're, if you like to drink a Guinness while watching Monday night football and you made it 39 days, maybe that's the dopamine hit you get. Or maybe it's a, uh, you get to call your dad because you like talking to your dad. Like, don't be surprised if through this journey and you start to feel really be, good. I would not be reliant on the betrayed spouse to make you feel good about the behavior that you're doing as you get into sobriety, because as you're going up for a significant period of time, they're going down as they are realizing right. and processing right. the trauma that they're experiencing. Yeah. They may be supportive of you, but sometimes they're not in the beginning yeah. and that there, there's a lot of deep wounding there. So putting the pressure on them to reward you for behavior that should have been happening the whole time in your marriage is probably not going to go well. Right, right, right. So I, you know, I think the, the understanding those little things and and evaluate them. Do you know? There's a there's a virtuous cycle to to getting a habit done and feeling good about it. There's also a uh, another cycle. Like if you fail, go. Well, how did I how did I not get that done today? What happened? And then make some change. Make some change because these are all good thought patterns that, that that you're working through. And you got to remember the reason you're in the in the place that you're in is because you didn't, you just allowed your thought patterns to run wild. You didn't have the tools, didn't have the right. resources, but in recovery, and you they do, defaulted right? defaulted to negative habits. Mm -hmm. Because right. that, because it is the brain likes patterns mm -hmm. and habits are in the subconscious and you right. just kind of drop right. into the, um, the blueprint that's already there. Right, right. And so it's, it actually takes intentionality to create the different path and start practicing that. Mm -hmm. But we all know eventually that if you're consistent enough with it, that then becomes a habit. And it's like when we went gluten-free, I remember being like, do, like asking all these questions and being like super overwhelmed by it. Like, Oh my gosh, does this have gluten in it? Does this have, what can I eat? What da, 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 da. And, mm -hmm. you know, and now uh, what, uh, how many years has it been? It was like 2012. 12. Right. Yeah. So, um, a lot uh, 11 years later. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like the easiest thing in the world. It's a new mm -hmm. habit. It's it's as easy as whatever it was that I ate before. You know, I don't have to think about it. Like right. I already know the answers, to like all of those questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, right. and so when you're building a new habit, it feels very frustrating. But once you, if you can be consistent enough and that's where like the rewards come in to kind of help, you know, help you get consistent enough so that it then becomes a new habit. Once it, right. it's locked in, then you don't have to think about it and it becomes second nature, just like anything else. Yeah. And so, okay. So a couple practical steps to do that, make it a baby step that mm -hmm. you can, you know, don't go from zero to a hundred, start with something like what's the reverse engineer. And then what's the most tiniest thing that you know that, that you, you can, can accomplish being off. consistent yeah. with. Yeah. Right. And then the second thing with that is, Anchor it to a habit that you already have. So something that you might want to do is maybe itemize it and maybe write it down or maybe do it in your head, but itemize like whatever it is that you do every single day already. Like, do I put my shoes on? Like, do I brush my teeth? Do I go to the bathroom? Like mm -hmm. little stuff, like I get coffee. Like, do I open the refrigerator door? Like, what are the things like literally that you do yeah. every single yeah. day that there's no way you'll go a day without? 
Because then you can anchor a habit that you want to implement with that. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, let's say you want to start practicing affirmations or something. Well, you brush your teeth every day, right? So maybe you put your affirmations on the bathroom sink right by your toothbrush and that's your reminder to start doing it. And then you lock that in. And then every morning you're saying that out loud to yourself and then you're brushing your teeth. And then uh, sooner or later, you don't need that sticky note. You just look in that mirror and you say the things that, you know, build, build you up. Yep. You know, or you change out the affirmations yeah. and use different language, you know, or maybe you want to start. You've talked about journaling a lot. Maybe you want to journal. Well, maybe your journal goes by your laptop. Like, is there a hat or your cell phone? Is there a habit where you reach for your phone right when you get up, but you want to start reaching for the journal, put the journal on top of the phone, right? Like, mm-hmm. What are the habits and the patterns that you already have? Right. The third thing that I think is really helpful, you actually mentioned this the other day, and then I shared it with a client too, because I thought it was a really good way to communicate it is use metaphors um, for things that you've already been successful with at life, that you've already had patterns or habits with. So you used the idea of um, using military language with military guys who are going through recovery. Um, Give that example real quick and then I'll kind of- Yeah, so so one of my groups has a lot of ex-army vets, right? And they all, the army is so, you know, programmed. And there's there before you go on a mission in the army, you do something called pre-combat checks. And those pre-combat checks are you make sure everybody's got water in their canteens, everybody has ammunition if that's applicable. In the case of me when I flew, that we were fueled up, that we had the maps and we were ready to go. Those are all pre-combat checks. Mm-hmm. So the example I was giving is when you do a morning journal habit. It sets your mind right. So you could argue that that is your pre-combat check for the day. Mm-hmm. And so when I was talking to this individual, he was like, oh, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah, he actually he, he resonated with it a, a thousand percent mm-hmm. because he was like, we would never have gone into a village in Iraq without having done our pre-combat checks. Yeah, and I think that's important, actually, because I I really do think the way you think about recovery and the way you think about your relationship and your marriage if you do or don't do the work is incredibly important and effective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we've termed it, you know, I've been through cancer and we've termed it as cancer of the relationship. You know, if you don't, if you don't do these things, your relationship will die. Yeah. Whether you stay together or not, but that's, you know, the trajectory if Mm -hmm. betrayal, you know, isn't healed. And if addiction continues and spirals and all this kind of stuff, right. Mm -hmm. It it metastasizes and it kills you. Um, And so I, I was talking to a client today and I was using that analogy, but in the medical sense. So they are in the, you know, the husband is in the medical field and I was like, yeah, you could, you know, she and I kind of came up with the analogy of, uh, you know, there's like a burst artery or whatever. Right. And he has to like pressure on it. Yeah. She, it's the wife is bleeding out and the husband has to put pressure on the artery to keep her from bleeding out. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's all the effort, right. That it takes to, to reconcile and to get sober and to recover the relationship because it is a lot of effort, right? And if you let go of the pressure of that, she will bleed out and die, right? Mm -hmm. It's the idea that like she is incredibly traumatized. She's incredibly wounded. And the effort that you make in the relationship um, can allow her to continue to be traumatized. It can slow it down or it can Mm -hmm. stop it, right? And so the level of that pressure is really important. And so, okay, so then you go, well, let's take that further because you can't stand there putting pressure on a wound forever, right? And so what do you need? You need a team. You need support. You need the right tools. You need the right resources so that you can actually then remove the pressure, heal the wound, mm-hmm. and both of you can lean on those resources for recovery. Right. And right. so I think it's important that people take recovery that seriously because yeah. the reality is when you don't do the work, these relationships fall apart. They do. They die. And when you don't do the work one or both individuals, when you don't do the work, um, you know, for the addiction recovery, for example, then you will relapse. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, if, if, if I could really like speak to the guys or, or the, the betrayers at this point, you know, if you if your spouse is yelling at you and saying, how could you do this? And is really kind of in your business and stuff like that. If, if a spouse is going to leave, they're going to leave. And if they're really, kind of getting into it, it's because they want to see a change. They really want to see a change. They have not thrown in the towel. They haven't done those things yet. So you need to honor that that effort on their part by implementing some positive habits that can support that. I get it. It's hard. It is hard. It's hard to go from a 
10, 20, 30 year addiction, you know, to, to something that soothed your wounds and, and, you know, made you escape and all that stuff. It is hard. Nobody's saying it isn't hard, but you can absolutely get there. So through this process, you know, you're, you got to speak to yourself in a positive way. You got to speak to yourself and say, yes, I was an addict. I'm no longer going to be an addict. Your body hears that stuff and you start to kind of formulate plans when you can voice those things out loud. You know, I, I remember one of the things that, that I would rehearse, and, and I think you know this, but in case you don't, is I would rehearse in my mind what I would say to you when you were triggered or how I would do it. I would maintain eye contact. I would tell you I understand and I'm very sorry that I hurt you. And is there anything I can do to help you? Like those were things that I, I rehearsed in my mind. And did because, you get that from your therapist? Well, it, it, a lot of it's in that help or heal, but mm -hmm. a lot of it was just, it was learned because mm -hmm. like I would drop my head, I would fall into a shame spiral mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? And I was like, I was like, no, I need to stand into this. And, and so it really, really helped because it's kind of like the emergency procedures we would practice in the helicopter because the emergency never happens on a Monday morning, on a sunny day when it's 9 a.m. and you've got all the rest in the world, they happen at the end of the day when you're tired, you're ready to go to bed, boom, your wife is triggered. So if you don't practice that, if you don't develop that positive habit transfer there, then you're going to have more difficulties. So, and I, I even say like there's levels of recovery that can be habits together. And one of those would be like the check-ins, right? Like, Tell me if you would disagree with this, but but I would say I disagree. that basically every couple should be talking about this every day. Yeah, yes. Probably yes. for a minimum of a year. If you are going multiple, if you are not in a really good place, if you're not sure that he's in recovery and you don't feel comfortable and safe and totally balanced yeah. in your relationship and in your environment, and you're not having conversations about this every day. Yeah. That's a one day too long of not moving forward. Right. Where What was I listening to the other day? Maybe were we listening to it together? There's something that basically said, if you're not moving towards healing, you're moving backwards yeah. with, re with addiction. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I made the recommendation to somebody last night about the check-ins. You know, they have these check-ins like Thanos and, and some of these other things that are formalized. And what happens at what what is common to everyone at the end of the day they're tired they just want to veg out and that sort of thing so i was like you got to put a reminder in your phone and maybe you got to do it at seven o'clock to make sure it gets done versus nine o'clock when one partner's already asleep and so i was like put that in your phone well, and make it a, make mean, it a reminder check-ins but then it's just like the 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 gates of communication between the two of you should always be open. Right. Right. Like yeah. whether it's texting and knowing where each other is and how you're feeling. Like mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm not feeling good, you're going to get a text about it. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm not going to like, I mean, yeah. you can reply when you have a moment at work or whatever, when you have a break, yeah. but I'm not going to wait until like 6 PM to be like, you know, I had a rough day. I had a rough day. Yeah. I, so, you know, and, 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 and maybe in some schedules that's necessary. Right. But. And, and sometimes I'm a little bit different. I probably won't, won't reach out right away. I, it takes me a little bit longer to kind of identify how I'm feeling and stuff like that. But I will say, I, I do, I do say how I'm feeling. If something yeah. happens, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like this. So I guess the point, you know, the overall point behind habits is you can decide to have bad habits that, that don't move you forward mm -hmm. or, and and don't allow you to live into your full potential as a yeah. human being, or you can decide to develop healthy habits. And there's a million ways to do that. Actually, you know, one of the uh, uh, one of the a great resource out there is the book Atomic Habits, and uh, John Maxwell recommended it. And actually, I was listening to John Maxwell talk, and he and he said something, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to make that one of my habits. And what he does is he reads 15 pages a day. Mm. 15 mm -hmm. pages. So 15 pages doesn't seem a lot if you're like, I want to read books, right? Well, books have varying lengths. But if you read 15 pages a day, that's achievable. You can you can bite that off and you can and it'll actually allow you to move through books pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think your point is everybody has habits. Mm -hmm. So if you assess your life, you decide are the habits that I have right now moving me towards the life that I want? That's right. Or away from the life that I want. Yeah. Uh, we'll wrap it up with this quote from Bruce Lee. Nice. He says, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks, but I do fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times.
Awesome. Yeah. Okay. If anybody's interested in joining the community, don't forget to check the uh, links down below in the show notes. Uh, the code pod VIP will get you the first month free. And I can't wait to see you in there. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this podcast interesting or helpful, it would mean so much if you leave a five-star review or post a screenshot and share on social media. We are on a mission to share the message of recovery and you can help get the word out. If you know a friend who could use this podcast, please share it.